so now we are going to talk about the laboratory diagnosis of pertussis so i have uh, as i have told you all many times that whenever you are going to write about the lab diagnosis you have to first write the specimen collection like what are the specimens collected and how the specimen is transported so here also we will first talk about what is the specimen which is collected so a specimen which is collected is the nasopharyngeal aspiration why because we know that there is uh, you know uh, uh, common cold like symptoms in this pertussis as we have talked in the first part of the video about the clinical feature of pertussis okay so as there is those common cold like symptoms and there is coryza uh, running nose etc so that's why we are collecting the nasopharyngeal aspirations and also we are collecting the post nasopharyngeal swabs which are also called as per nasal swabs okay which are also called as the per nasal swabs so these are the specimens which are collected now for uh, doing this nasopharyngeal swab collection what type of swab is to be used you have to be very peculiar here i will tell you why so for collecting the post nasopharyngeal swab posterior nasopharyngeal swab you have to use the alginate swab or you can use the dacron swab but of course the alginate will be better than the dacron swab okay but always avoid the cotton swabs always avoid the cotton swabs the main reason of mentioning is to let you know about this fact that the cotton swabs are contraindicated for the body teller pertussis because the fatty acid content of the cotton inhibits the body teller pertussis bacilli so you can use this alginate swab alginate swab or the dacron swab alginate will be although better than the dacron but you can use any one of them but never use this cotton swab never use this cotton swab because that inhibits the growth of the body teller pertussis and your result may come out to be false negative after that you have to know that total six swabs are collected and the collection of specimen is done on alternate days like you collect the specimen today then on the uh, uh, i mean on the third day then on the uh, sixth day like that you have to collect it on alternate days so total six swabs are collected now comes the transport of the specimen so the transport of the specimen is done in a charcoal based media remember this it is it is done in a charcoal based media then comes the direct detection by smear by the dfa direct fluorescence assay so uh, we prepare a smear with the nasopharyngeal secretions that we have collected and we label it with the fluorescein labeled antibody and then we examine it under the microscope we can detect this uh, bacilli by that i mean this cocoa bacilli by this uh, fluorescein mechanism fluorescence assay under the microscope but still in microbiology when we talk about microbiology we have to talk about the culture there cannot be a lab diagnosis without culture so here also we have culture what are the media that we use for the body teller pertussis it is the reagan and lovey medium and the bgg potato blood agar media so these are the two media that we can use for the body teller pertussis and here uh, we incubate the uh, media at 37 degrees centigrade for 72 to 120 hours after inoculation of the specimen over those media so we incubate it aerobically at 37 degree for 72 to 120 hours after inoculation now after incubation we see that there is if we see that there is development of grayish white shiny colonies which are appearing like mercury drops or which are appearing like bisected pearl appearance then we can get a clue that it may be body pertussis. if these findings are there then we just get a clue that it may be body pertussis because mercury drops are very peculiar finding in the body pertussis. then we do the culture smears once we are getting colonies over the agar then we do culture smear 
so we produce a smear over a clean crisp free glass slide and then we gram stain it and if we get thumb print appearance okay if we get typical thumb print appearance uh, of the gram negative cocoa bacilli on that stained uh, glass slide then uh, now our belief becomes more strong that it is cocoa bacilli I mean it is a uh, body teller produces because this thumb print appearance is very peculiar of this body teller produces so if you want to remember two things of this body teller produces only I will see you or suggest you to remember these two things number one thing is that it is showing this mercury drop bisected mercury drop or the bisected pearl appearance and it shows the thumb print appearance on gram staining these two are the this is uh, the appearance this mercury drop is the appearance of the culture agar i mean culture media while this thumb print appearance is the appearance on the gram staining okay these two are the most important finding of the body teller produces next comes the identification so of course as always identification can be done by family talk and by tech and molecular methods are always there so that is the pcr we can use now how can we prevent this body teller pertussis infection or the pertussis for that matter so we can do the prophylactic medication like if any one person of a family has got the infection of pertussis then to other family members we can give erythromycin so that erythromycin will prevent the infection to the non-infected persons plus we can use the vaccines vaccination is done uh, in the childhood uh, always so vaccination can be done for prevention of this pertussis infection so vaccines are of two types one is the whole cell pertussis vaccine and the other one is the all cellular pertussis vaccine now whole cell pertussis vaccine is given in dpt while all cellular pertussis vaccine is given in dapt okay this generally we give this generally we give this whole cell uh, pertussis vaccine in the national immunization schedule 2020 but if someone is developing neurological uh, adverse events following immunization eefi so if someone develops neurological adverse event following immunization then we have to shift to the all cellular pertussis vaccine Okay, we have to shift to the ossicular pertussis vaccine because pertussis is a component uh, which is uh, very much uh, related to the neurological complications after the vaccination although it occurs in very few people very few children but still it is a very important uh, uh, EFI so that's why we have to shift to the ossicular pertussis vaccine from next dose now in the dpt the pertussis vaccine is given along with in combination with the diphtheria toxoid and tetanus toxoid why is this so so this is because the pertussis component acts as an adjuvant and increases the immunogenicity of the diphtheria and the tetanus toxoids remember the diphtheria and tetanus are not increasing the immunogenicity of the I mean uh, of the pertussis vaccine rather the pertussis component is increasing the immunogenicity of the diphtheria and the tetanus toxoid so this should be kept in mind always okay this is all about the whole cell pertussis vaccine now coming to an uh, important point about the all cellular pertussis vaccine it is that to the children more than five year who has who have missed the dpt doses so general uh, the dpt doses are given up to five years of age but if some children have missed the dpt doses in the earlier five ages five years of age then after five years of age they should not be given dpt okay they should not be given dpt now they should be given dapt or cellular pertussis vaccine so there becomes two indications for the dapt that is the to children more than five years who have missed the dpt doses and also to those children who are showing neurological efi to the dpt vaccine or the cellular uh, i mean whole cell pertussis vaccine okay 
so that's all about the lab diagnosis of the body gala produces plus the prevention of the group gala produces